1811 Kidori Historic House. I'm John McCusker, the founder and managing director. The 1811 Kidori Historic House tells the story of two seminal events in American history. One, the 1811 Slave Rebellion, believed to be the largest in American history. And we tell the story of the birth of jazz, as this plantation was the birthplace of Edward Kidori, one of the first jazz band leaders anywhere. Along with our museum, we are part of a larger Freedom Trail, recalling the 1811 revolt. And there's a kiosk located out in front of our museum, and you can follow that kiosk down the river towards Desterham, following the route of the rebels as they marched in 1811. We also have exhibits on uh, featuring historic instruments, uh, interpretive panels, and a range of other storytelling devices to help put people in the world of the 19th century. We hope you can come and visit us soon. You can reach us at 1811kidorihistorichouse.com. This is our 1811 room. It's the only part of the house that we have furnished in any way, uh, primarily to set the stage to tell the story of the 1811 rebellion. So this is furnished with uh, period furniture, uh, just to give a feel uh, and put our visitors uh, in the mind of, of what the scene was like when this rebellion began in 1811. This is uh, one of two rooms telling the story of Edward Kidd Ori. Ori was born in 1886 uh, in the quarters here at the Woodland Plantation, as it was called then. And he would go on to be one of the leading hot jazz band leaders in New Orleans. In fact, it's Kid Ori who discovers a young trumpet player named Louis Armstrong. To tell his story, we have interpretive panels uh, tracing his life in Louisiana. And this is pride of our collection. This is Maurice Dow Trombone from when he was in New Orleans over a century ago. In our other Ori room, we feature uh, century-old phonographs, Victrolas, Edison machines, so you can listen to this uh, old music on the original machines people listened to back in the day. Uh, we also have uh, computer interactive displays and Alexa, so all you have to do is call out and you'll be listening to Kid Ori. Hi, I'm Charlotte Jones, Director of Operations and Programming here at the 1811 Kid Ori Historic House. Stomping Grounds, Mules at Work in, in Southeast Louisiana, is an exhibit focusing on the long-forgotten hybrid animal, the mule, and the role that it played in agriculture and urban environments such as New Orleans. The Woodland Plantation, which is the former uh, former name of the 1811 Kid Ori Historic House, housed and used scores of mules for sugar plantation well after the Civil War. They're also used in New Orleans to pull streetcars, Mardi Gras floats, and your everyday delivery wagons. Come by the 1811 Kid Ori Historic House and you can meet Chica, our resident mule. Hi, my name is Ron St. Pierre, the managing partner here at Truck Farms Africa, St. Louis, Louisiana. We invite you to bring you and your family and all your friends out to Truck Farm. The building's been around since 1922, originally a hotel for horse and carriage and people coming up and down the river. So truck farm is based on a, a term, a French term, uh, getting local vegetables and produce to and from. So uh, this is one of the tracts of land that was used for farming. Uh, we do feature a lot of local vegetables, a lot of local ingredients here. We have Des Allen's catfish. Of course, we have local Undui, uh, part of the Undui Trail. So uh, the building was torn down to the studs about seven years ago and put back into commerce. We were lucky to acquire the building uh, in August of last year and then reopened up the truck farm in October of 2020. Quite an interesting ride in 2020, but we've been blessed to be doing well and uh, growing every step of the way. Uh, we do feature comfort food, Southern comfort food, with local fresh ingredients. Uh, we're very family friendly. We have something for all ages. Uh, we feature Gulf seafood, we have craft cocktails, craft beer. We have an extensive outdoor area, uh, covered patio, covered seating with fans. Uh, we feature outdoor games such as cornhole. Uh, we've got anorak neck chairs. We've got picnic tables. We've got a fenced-in area. Very family friendly. Um, we do do live live music on Friday and Saturday nights. Uh, we have ladies' night on Tuesday night with the piano player. 
Occasionally we'll feature the acoustic, one man acoustic show. So here at Truck Farm on Sundays, we have a bottomless crunch. You can have a bottomless Bloody Mary, you can do mimosas, or you can do branding up punch, either one of the three. You can go back and forth between all of them. We have special seatings from uh, special events such as Mother's Day uh, with a fixed prefix menu. You know, reservations are not required, but we do take them for parties over 10. The building that is housed at the Truck Farm Tap has been around since 1922. It was a general store, it was a hotel. For the last 74 years, it was a restaurant or some form of fashion. A lot of people from the area may notice, may know it as the St. Rose Tavern. The St. Rose Tavern is still alive and well. It's down the street just a few miles uh, in New Sarpy. I invite you to visit there as well. The decor that's at the Truck Farm Tavern now is all owned by Mr. Tommy Coleman. We've got some, we've got some exquisite artwork. We've got uh, the mural from 1921, painted by William Woodward. It was originally the mural that hung in the National Food Building downtown. It's a phenomenal piece of art. Uh, we've got other quirky pieces of art that adorn our walls. Uh, you may see someone that you know. You may see uh, a piece of artwork by a loved one. Uh, you may some, see some things that are kind of hidden, such as our smokestack over our smoke that's a, a bull. Um, we have some backlit things made out of driftwood. Uh, some local artists all featured here. Growing up in the area, Bringing the truck farm back into commerce was very important to me. I grew up born and raised in Destrehan. One of my partners is from St. Rose. It's important that we support the community that supports us. So we try and use as many local ingredients as we possibly can. You may see us at the farmer's market on Wednesdays or Saturday morning. We've got Des Island's catfish. We use an undoey right from down the road from Bailey's or Jacobs. Um, we go through about 150 pounds of undoey for our dishes a week. We've got a wonderful andouille hash on Sunday mornings for brunch. We've got, of course, chicken and andouille gumbo. And we also feature an andouille crusted golf dish that has a uh, coconut curry sauce over pecan rice. It's phenomenal. Uh, I invite you to try it. There's nothing like it in the area. Hello and welcome to the 1811 Kidori Historic House in Laplace, Louisiana. We are now open. Located in the main residence of the former Andre Ori Plantation in Laplace, Louisiana, the museum tells the story of two noteworthy moments in American history, the 1811 Slave Rebellion, which began on these grounds, and the life of pioneer jazz man Edward Kidd Ori, who was born in the quarters here in 1886. Our museum exhibits feature Ori's century-old valve trombone, photographs never seen by the public, 1920s era sheet music and lyrics written in the hand of Jelly Roll Morton, rare 78 RPM discs and century old working phonographs. To tell the story of 1811, we have collected items related to both the lives of the enslaved and those of their enslavers, and we have furnished a room in the style of the era. The museum also features a display on rural life and the sugarcane economy, a photography exhibit on area culture, and a gift shop selling music and books related to our collection. We are open Tuesday through Sunday for tours by appointment only. Visit us online at the 1811 com to book your visit today.
We've got a 50-foot alligator bonfire that we're calling Saint. He's the newest mascot of Louisiana's River Parishes. And, you know, Saint represents, obviously, St. John, St. James, St. Charles. Uh, but what, what he represents is actually, we think, the representation that traditions are going to survive this corona situation that we find ourselves in. So while this year's bonfires and the levee aren't going to take place like normal, uh, bonfire country, this region that everyone knows as a place you go for that amazing tradition that we've been doing for over 150 years, it'll be back next year and Saint will be here every single day to remind people so that they can come take pictures, learn about that tradition, and it really came about um, from an idea a couple of months ago of how do we create a mascot for a region that has so much to offer that picking one type of thing makes it difficult right it makes it difficult to represent a region as diverse as this with one thing and so by having an alligator bonfire we represent new orleans swamp country we represent bonfire country alligators we all know look like dinosaurs right they've been here forever so they represent our history so saint is going to help tell the story of the river parish is going back hundreds of years to the present day so we hope everybody comes out here and enjoy it was built by the blood sweat and bonfire crew. It's the crew out of Garyville, Louisiana. It was sponsored by the Festival of the Bonfires, so truly a regional collaboration. The Festival of the Bonfires happens in the bonfire capital of the world. Uh, the bon Blood, Sweat, and Bonfires crew typically builds that headline bonfire every year. In fact, Saint was inspired from their design last year, which was a 78-foot uh, alligator bonfire. Saint's just 50, uh, but he's out here at our Tourism Commission office in Laplace, and he'll be here 24-7 seven for, for people to come and take pictures. So bonfires obviously go back over 150 years. The reasons that bonfires were built are as varied as it was the light pole out front of a plantation before there was electricity along the river. The slaves built them in the fields to celebrate the end of harvest season. And the modern reason everyone talks about is that it's, they're built on top of the levee to light the way for Papa Noel or Santa Claus. And the season kicks off traditionally the Monday after Thanksgiving. We call that bonfire season. It lasts all of December. Family, friends, multi-generations get together, cut down the wood, design their bonfire, and then build it over the course of a couple of weeks leading up to Christmas Eve when the bonfires are lit for Papa Noel. And anyone that's been knows you don't know it until you've gone to it. It's one of the most unique traditions that exist in Louisiana, I would argue, the nation and world. But it's literally, I call it the Cajun Man Burning Festival. It's 200 big piles of wood that are lit on fire with fireworks and, and, and firecrackers and explosions and tons of music, pots of gumbo, hot chocolate. And it's really just a 10 mile long outdoor Cajun local open house where everyone's welcome and no one's a stranger. And so a couple of years ago, we started parking shuttles and designated parking locations so that it's a little bit easier for a visitor to get to. Um, this year, obviously, our local officials in consultation with the state uh, did not allow the tradition to happen this year because of Corona and because it's so popular. Last year, we probably had about 40,000 people attend what is a four hour event and so there's it, it was impossible to have crowd control and social distancing this year but we know based on the opinions of the locals and the the questions that we've been getting here at the Tourism Commission this tradition's not going anywhere the interest in it is not going anywhere and it will be back next year stronger than ever I started building bonfires when I was uh, four or five years old my dad and 11 and uh, you know from there on every every year for Christmas it just became a staple of what, what our family would do we enjoyed, uh, you know, being on a levee every Christmas Eve, and it, it, it just kind of like, it brings back that nostalgia every year whenever we get up on the levee for Christmas Eve and start building our bonfires. So that's kind of how I got started, and it just carried on from there. When I was able to, you know, build on my own about 13, 14 years old, the group of guys that, uh, that we build with every year, we kind of started, you know, with more traditional bonfires, and then we formed our little group called Blood Sweat Bonfires. And we started uh, building more custom and elaborate bonfires up on a levee that drew a lot of visitors in. Last year, we built a 78-foot alligator on a levee. And uh, it kind of caught on with a lot of people around the parish. And, you know, Buddy and everybody at the commission here wanted to kind of replicate that 
bonfire here as a, you know, just kind of like a, a landmark here for tourists who are coming traveling through the sea. So uh, he had contacted us a few months back about building it. So we developed the plan and got the ball rolling and set everything in motion. And uh, just recently we started on this project this past Monday. Um, and the plans kind of coincided along what we did on the levee. And we used uh, a slightly different, you know, procedure for this as because we were using it, we were using wood, you know, more suited for a permanent, a permanent fixture instead of, you know, cutting logs out of the uh, woods like we normally do. So, you know, we bought construction materials and uh, kind of had to scratch our heads a little bit on trying to figure it out, doing it this way. But we went on ahead and replicated um, that bonfire we had built on the levee on a slightly smaller scale. This one's 53 feet long from nose to tail. The other one was 78 feet long nose to tail. Um, this one here is built out of uh, pressure treated lumber. And we got an interior frame structure similar to what we did with the bonfire. I think uh, another big thing to note about this is uh, it, it's gonna be up for a while for people to see this won't be something like a bonfire which is burned so you can come out anytime and look at it over here on side of Beltair. Um, it's going to be lit up at night with some lights. My reaction for whenever we put the stain on it to kind of make it you know resemble what the bonfire looked like is really really cool and I think a lot of people are going to be you know stopping to check this thing out. It's, it's something that this parish doesn't really have. It's something that this whole region doesn't have around here is like a, a I guess you would say like a, a sculpture of, of, of such magnitude that people can come and check out. Uh, it's going to be real cool for St. John Parish. We're looking forward to everybody to get to come out and see it. I think it's a true testament to the fact that every family that build or, or friend group that builds a bonfire, it's a passion. And they do it year after year. They have their location, they have their permit, the local governments know and they take a sense of pride in it and it, that's their moment it's their structure and it's their party that they're inviting locals and visitors to and so i think saint it, being a representation of all of that passion and pride is going to be a point of pride for everyone that's involved in, in bonfire country because it truly is a regional effort. Um, we've got vendors that day serving food and selling many bonfires. Uh, the festival of the bonfires is typically in mid-December, so we kick it off right after Thanksgiving. We burn them on Christmas Eve, and in between there we have the festival of the bonfires. And so that tradition, that pride, you can see that this isn't just, I call it piles of wood because I don't know how to build a bonfire, but to the people who build them there's an art and there's an actual science and especially with the blood sweat and bonfires crew theirs is an engineering feat year after year that they spend all year designing and this year they're actually building um, a replica of the world's largest bonfire so in 1979 there was the world's largest bonfire built and there's a famous picture and so they've they're replicating that um, on their private property because all the all the bonfires this year are going to have to be private parties and not on top of the levees like previous years. This is a unique location. Uh, tell us about the uh, opportunity for people from all over the country to come here and, and see this. Well, and so this is our, our tourism office in the center of Louisiana's River Parishes in Laplace, but it's right off the interstate. And the beauty of that is it allows the visitor on I-10, I-55, anybody traveling to or from New Orleans, they can pull over and, true, and, and visually capture, right, a moment of, of, of their visit. And also our history will live in that picture forever. And so we're hoping that, that visitors and locals alike come take pictures all, day, all year, 365 saints not going anywhere he'll be maintained as a mainstay and now mascot of louisiana's river parishes the tradition of bonfires well, as far as we know what we've been told uh started way back 150 plus years ago and this whole tradition was they used to build fires along the banks of the Mississippi River so parishioners could go to midnight mass because back then, you know, as, as we all know, they didn't have street lights or anything to light the way. So we built these fires along the river so people could find their way. And eventually over time, Cajun folklore grew it into uh, 
a story for the kids saying that these bonfires were built to light the way for Papa Noel along the banks of the foggy Mississippi River. And, and that still stands today and we tell our kids that and all the young ones who comes up here so they have something kind of look forward to and get excited for the bonfire so they know that Papa Noel is be able to bring their presents tonight. So bonfires are actually a tradition that has been passed down from generations to generations. We tell stories, we sing songs, we even uh, use fireworks on Christmas Eve and it's such a joyous occasion. The tradition is still alive and well today. As far as you can see down that levee, you're gonna see bonfires lined up. And another thing is just open doors to people throughout the world to come and experience what we experienced building these bonfires. The community come together and share the talent of showing off the talents of building bonfires. And when I say bonfires, I mean we build some very, very high, high, high design bonfires from turtles to oil rig to airplanes to submarines to ships, you name it. They build it. I don't know if you're gonna find it anywhere else, but St. John and St. James Parish. We don't do it for us, we do it for the people around us in the community so they can enjoy yeah. it. So these kids, they bring their cardboard from their houses, you know, the, the Christmas tree boxes, refrigerator boxes, whatever they can find. And they line up a hundred yards across the back of the levee and they, you, and they slide all day long. It's a free babysitter. It really is. Yes. And uh, these kids enjoy it, you know, and. Everybody wins. It's, it's, it's free and uh, put smiles on their faces. It's going to create memories for those kids just like this lever created memories for us when we were kids. And that's what we want to keep on. We want to keep on the, 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 the smiles on the kids' faces, the billions and trillions of cardboards on back to levy the next day from all of the kids. You know, every single one of them piece of cardboards had full five smiles on it. How can people get more information? Uh, they can go to explorebonfirecountry.com explorebonfirecountry.com information on how to build a bonfire how to be a certified bonfire builder we had maps and 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 diagrams of this year but that'll come back next year uh, there's also a, a, a history of the bonfire video that's available at explorebonfirecountry.com and uh, a map to get to saint 